You want to avoid any kind of trauma during childbirth. Really, there's there's ways to do it. You have to know things like, you know, literally like how to read your baby's heart rate. You know, it's in the book, thousand percent. And Cytotech, not a fan. Oh, that's in my book also. Pitocin, Cytotech, all of that stuff is in my book as basically those two hand in hand. Oh, that's number two tip to avoid birth trauma. Skip the pit. But elective pit inductions when your baby's fine, as a birth trauma attorney, I would not recommend it. But just understanding that this book um, is also, it's not a scary book. It is a book that it's meant to make sure that everything goes right. It's not about what can go wrong. So. Gina Mundy, thank you so much for joining me. You wrote a book on a uh, safer childbirth um, for parents to really follow as a guide. Why did you do that? Oh, great question. Uh, basically, I'd been a childbirth attorney for 19 years. And just so your audience understands, when I say, you know, they're childbirth attorney, I'm involved in cases involving the birth of a baby when something goes wrong mm -hmm. and baby is not born healthy baby may pass, mom may um, pass away. So I've been doing that for about 19 years. Uh, we had a, like a near family tragic event. And basically that stopped me in my tracks. And, you know, I started to think, um, it's actually the whole introduction to the book. Um, but in our situation, our baby was fine. Um, but again, it stopped me in my tracks and it made me realize that there are things that, you know, I have learned at that point over the last 19 years. Now I'm 21 years deep into it. Um, but I have, I have girls, um, one's 20 uh, next week. My other one will be 16. And um, so I started to write down for my kids, you know, hey, this is what you need to know to make sure the mistakes and complications I see, you know, that occur during childbirth, you know, don't happen during the birth of my grandkids. Um, and then as I started to write that information uh, down, I realized, wait a minute, this is not only information that will help my kids have a healthy baby, but, you know, families all over the world. So that's really where, where it all started. And by the way, as, as I was telling that story, I'm trying to turn off my email and all that. So I hope, I hope it makes sense. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, my email's up. So I apologize. July 2023, that, that marked kind of a turning point for me as a physical therapist. We've been really pushing for uh, moms to have access, you know, to, to rehab, to a recovery, if, especially if they had a, a delivery type that they were not expecting, like an open abdominal surgery, which is cesarean section. And in Jessica Ross's case in the Clayton uh, County, uh, Georgia case, her baby's head was decapitated during birth. And that was later ruled a homicide, I believe in February of this year uh, uh, by Dr. St. Julian. And in that case, um, it was alleged that the hospital staff tried to cover up the case um, and tried to encourage the family to get a cremation. So that would have hit the evidence. In those cases where a woman of a, a you know, potentially a larger size if she's been on her back, uh, you know, and, and potentially is in a situation where the baby is at risk. And in in those, you know, cases that that, you know, where the baby is stuck, how do you get involved as an attorney to guide the family on on decisions that need to be made? Yeah. So I want to clarify, because I think this is important and it, it's interesting because almost a hundred percent of the people believe that I actually represent families, but mm -hmm. I actually run, I actually represent the delivery teams. So I don't really advise families. I do. I'm aware of that case. And that's a very sad case um, that happened. Um, but, you know, I, I took my experience though, again, of 19 years deep with delivery teams, traveling the United States, hashing out every aspect of labor and delivery, going over the mistakes, going over the complications with all these different delivery teams. Again, you know, just to try to help prevent this stuff. But I wrote the book to families because I do believe that in order to have it, you know, the safe delivery, that it really starts with the families. So it's hard for me to say, how would I advise the families? I mean, that is such a tragic event. Um, 
you know, I, I'm aware of it, but it, it's very, it's just sad. And I know that the delivery teams I represented, that wouldn't happen in any of my hospitals. That's all I can say. Gotcha. And thank you for clarifying. So you represent the delivery teams. And so in that case, you would be um, advising the delivery team to not cover up, you know, uh, uh, that incident, you know, which, um, you know, they, it was later found that they did, they tried to, but then in terms of just um, talking to the families, how can families just be better prepared to avoid that situation entirely? That's a very unique situation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's probably why it's news all over the United States, because that stuff's not really what happens. That's not really what my book, you know, is about, um, you know, if you want to avoid any kind of trauma um, during childbirth, um, you know, really there's there's ways to do it. You got to prepare for childbirth. You got to get ready. You got to know what you're walking into. Um, you have to know things like, you know, literally like how to read your baby's heart rate. You know, it's in the book and I've had many experts testify that, you know, they'll say, Gina, the only way a baby can talk to me during labor is through their heart rate. So I'm like, Hey parents, if you can understand your baby's heart rate, it's like your baby can talk to you too. Not only that, a lot of times when they're, um, if you understand the heart rate, that's a basis for a lot of the recommendations a delivery team will make. So it's understanding things like that. It's understanding to the, the common issues and common facts that are in this case, are in these cases to give parents a heightened sense of awareness um, help activate their intuition, all of that good stuff. Um, but you know, like in the cases and, you know, I'm not sure, um, the Georgia case, if this was, I can't remember. Um, but the number one fact in a birth trauma case, childbirth case is the drug Pitocin, which is like an elective Pitocin induction. So number that's number one, um, that is in most cases. So the flip side of that is if you want to avoid the complications and mistakes that I see in these cases where, you know, again, baby's not born healthy, go, if you can, if it's possible, you know, shoot for the all natural vaginal birth, you know, spontaneous, skip the drugs, skip the interventions. Those cases are very few and far between. It's really where we see all of these interventions that, you know, it's like they start with the Pitocin. Those contractions are extremely strong. Boom. Now we have epidural and it's just like intervention after intervention. And that really is how the, you know, a lot of the complications and mistakes end up happening in these cases. That, and it's interesting that you say that because that's really where my awakening um, into this this work began was in 2020, where I actually treated women who had a, a unexpected hysterectomy, um, and just following the labor and delivery note, you know they were given pitocin. Um, in these two cases, particularly, they were first time moms, and so mm -hmm. given pitocin, um, uh, you know, just start the induction. Uh, you know, uncontrolled bleeding led to a hysterectomy. And in those cases, you know, I often wondered, I don't have any evidence, I don't have the background that you do, but I often wondered, wow, I see a lot of primary C-sections and I see Pitocin or Cytotec, mesoprostol, which mesoprostol we know is not FDA approved for induction. It's a gastric ulcer medication. It's used for abortion, it's used for postpartum hemorrhage, but it's not FDA approved for any of those uses. It's only FDA approved for gastric ulcers, but I would read the labor and delivery note. And as a physical therapist, I was coming in just to help a mom after a major abdominal surgery, like I would, you know, typically after a colon surgery, gallbladder surgery on another unit. And so I, I often wondered, you know, has this anything to do with what I'm seeing? And you, you hit it on the nail. You said, if people can put, uh, avoid Pitocin, particularly, they could probably avoid a lot of the complications that come with that. Yeah. Is that thousand percent and cytotech not a fan so that's in my book also so pitocin cytotech all of that stuff is in my book as basically those two hand in hand oh that's bad news avoid cytotech if you can there's other things like cervidil or you know that might be a little bit better um yeah but it's um you know interesting i it's birth trauma week um, so I'm just doing my post for Instagram. And so when we were kind of going back and forth, I'm like, and the number, their number two tip is skip number one, let me back up number two tip to avoid birth trauma, skip the pit. And so, yeah, it's, it's, 
I'm really sad for your first time moms who had to undergo the hysterectomy because obviously, you know, many moms want more than one baby and pit is just, it's bad news all the way around. The scary part is that depending on your doctor, I mean, different doctors, different opinions. So right now I, you know, because I'm out advocating for, you know, people to not use pit unless it's medically necessary, definitely not cytotech, but cytotech is cheap. So hospitals want to use it. Um, but I had one doctor tell me just recently that the standard of care, the things that, you know, what he has to go by requires him to offer his patients an elective C-section, I'm sorry, elective induction at 39 weeks with Pitocin. If they're a good candidate, most are, you know, a fine candidate for, um, you know, elective Pitocin induction. So he's like, I have to offer them. And I'm like, no, you don't. What planet are you on? And then I just had another doctor last week, much happier about this opinion. I just had another doctor tell me that because of all the complications and mistakes that they see with Pitocin, they're shying away from offering or doing elective Pitocin inductions at their hospital. So again, different doctors, different opinions. So, you know, but I'll tell you, some doctors are really gung ho when it comes to Pitocin as a childbirth attorney. I am not a fan of Pitocin. I understand um, very similar to the introduction of my book, the story I was kind of to of alluding to um, at the beginning of the podcast, you know, in that situation, um, you know, it was, you know, my niece and um she was having the first baby of our next generation. She rolls up to the hospital 37 weeks. There's concerns about the baby. She's not in labor, two choices, pit induction, C-section, but the baby had to come out. Um, so she chose Pitocin, you know, induction. So sometimes that might be the route you have to choose if you don't want a C-section in your baby, you know, something's going on, but elective pit inductions when your baby's fine as a birth trauma attorney, I would not recommend it. I find it hard to believe that you're defending the the delivery team and not the family when you have so much information that can help the family because Pitocin, I, I've not heard of just any case where it's like um, people are just foregoing Pitocin um, in terms of like being offered um, an alternative. I mean, if someone is coming into the hospital mm -hmm. and they just don't know what they don't know, they don't mm -hmm. forego Pitocin. That's just such a standard part of, of delivery, of labor and delivery. Right. I, I like your little comment, by the way. I know a lot that that's why people are so shocked. They're like, wait a minute, you represent the delivery team. And I'm like, yeah, but that's what gives me the credibility then to go out and you know, be like, okay, I've talked to everybody, but listen here in the end, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a human. And the hardest part of my job all day long is the day I have to talk to a family about the birth of their baby. I have always had a very difficult time with that. And that's why, again, once we hit that family, um, almost family, you know, tragic event, again, introduction to the book, um, that's when I'm like, nope, I'm going to get my message to the families. And you know what, believe it, the hospitals are fine with it. I mean, I'm still representing the delivery teams to this day. Um, I was working earlier on a case, but you know, they don't want it. And I know some hospitals have a really bad rap and listen, all hospitals across the United States are completely different. I've been to the, probably all hospital systems. Be, again, now I'm 21 years deep where I've talked to people are, they are so different. Um, you know, so there might be ones that, you know, may cover up soft or whatever. Those are not ones that I, I would, I would decline to re obviously represent anything like that, but no, the hospitals are like, you know, they don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. So they don't mind that I'm out there to families going, Hey, skip the pit induction, even if your doctor wants it, or, you know, I hate cytotech. They call it the nurses, by the way, they won't tell you this stuff. They call it cytoblast. And I'll tell you, cytotech and Pitocin, oh yeah, that's when something goes wrong. Those two are especially together. And I, I hate it. My stomach turns when I get a new case in and I'm like, the first words I typically read, mom is being induced with Pitocin. We're going to ripen her cervix, meaning they get it ready for the induction with cytotech. And I'm like, here we go again. This has been, you know, now 21 years of my life. This is my first case was in February, 2003. So- 
In terms of your book, you're giving almost like an inside look to families, first time families, maybe uh, families after, um, you know, another birth and they may have had um, such a traumatic birth that they they definitely don't want to go down that path. We've seen a lot of families where they're now arming themselves with a lot more information. Um, our last podcast um, uh, guest, maybe uh, quite a few episodes ago, um, explained to us that she was actually given. Uh, why am I why am I blinking on on this? And I teach it all the time, but she was actually given. Um, a, a medication for her hypertension for preeclampsia. It'll come to me. And while she was getting up, IV, I, IV magnesium sulfate, while she was getting up to go to the bathroom with the nurse, she passed out and fell. And, and so again, we've had cases where uh, moms have hit the metal components of the uh, bathroom fi fixture, which in hospitals is completely exposed of the toilet. Uh, they've hit themselves, they've fallen onto uh, their back, they've injured themselves, especially after an epidural, just kind of knocks out the nervous system. And so, again, we're not representing uh, families, we're just kind of representing their recovery process. But there's so much in terms of that childbirth period and that early recovery period where it's caused us to really look at this issue as rehab therapists to say, Families need to be educated. We we we're not getting anywhere talking with the labor and delivery team. How do you pick? How do you get someone out of bed who's on a blood pressure lowering drug because of preeclampsia and not know that that's not safe? How do you do that? And so your book really excites me because it's talking to the family, but yet you have worked with these labor and delivery teams and you're reading the same thing over and over and over again. They're using the same drugs. They're doing the same interventions that we know really shouldn't be done, that we know really shouldn't be um, given to families if they're going to actually cause more harm. What, what do you, yeah, what do you want to leave the audience with with that? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. So listen, here's the deal with the book. Introduction, great story. And the story, it's scary, but it's, you know, it, it has a good ending, but it is like a very, it's like a birth trauma case. Um, chapter one, those are the lessons from the birth trauma cases. This is what we can learn from families, the delivery team, the medical experts that come in. And I can tell you right now, both of those, the introduction to my book, again, the very important story that every expecting parent should read. And it's not that it's scary. It's just, so you understand what a typical case looks like. That's it. Um, and then number or chapter one, that is just such an incredibly important chapter because as lessons, we can learn from the past to prevent it from happening in the future. Both of those are on my website for free, ginamundi.com. Each lesson in chapter one is then a subsequent chapter. So I'm like, okay, here's your lesson, everybody. But then, you know, I elaborate on it more, um, you know, in the subsequent chapters, but just understanding that this book um, is also, it's not a scary book. It is a book that it's meant to make sure that everything goes right. It's not about what can go wrong. So, you know, I may say, hey, yeah, hits the most common facts in a legal baby case. Okay. I have a chapter on how to have a safe Pitocin induction, because I understand that some people need a Pitocin induction and that might be a really good option for them. So I tell them since my Kate first case in February, 20, sorry, sorry, February, 2003, Watching Pitocin inductions go wrong, I know how to have a safe one. So again, there's a chapter on that. There's like information that's so important. And you may deal on um, this, I gotta tell you this one. Um, also in chapter 11, again, this is information you're not gonna find anywhere else. It's the top 10 issues in baby cases, but most complications and mistakes occur after mom's water breaks. That is an incredibly important decision because yeah, obviously babies in the uterus hanging out with placenta umbilical cords surrounded by the fluid fluid drains out that changes the environment inside the uterus so again that becomes a very important question um and i don't know how your experience is with that but there's just so many different things in this book in this book again it was written to make sure families avoid the complications that i see that result in life changing events. These families are one decision or minutes from a healthy baby. My book was written again to help family avoid these situations and have a healthy baby. Gina Mundy, 
best-selling author of A Parent's Guide to a Safer Childbirth. I, I can't wait to dig into this because you're absolutely right. Amniotomy, um, we've, we've just seen so many um, infection cases, um, especially in the mm -hmm. hospital after, after um, you know, moms have had uh, their water broken, um, uh, needing a delivery that was a C-section now because of the infection risk, all of that. I can't wait to dig into that section specifically, just as a practitioner who is working really close to the time of, of birth. Um, this has been amazing, amazing conversation. GinaMundy.com uh, is your website where people can find the book, anywhere else where they can find information about you, anything else that you have out there. You know what? I love my Instagram account and I am ready to start. I'm ready. I'm dedicated now to posting. Um, you know, I'm like, okay, I got to keep posting because I'm actually having a, you know, it's great way to get information out like the birth trauma prevention tips. Number one, number two, um, I did start a podcast called the child birth attorney with Gina Mundy, again, trying to prevent birth trauma stuff that everybody really needs to know again, with the goal of making sure families have a healthy baby. So yeah, every, but when in doubt, fall back, ginamundy.com. That's where all my information always is. Best, pl best place to buy the book is Amazon. Um, and if you have Kindle Unlimited, I keep it at Kindle Unlimited. So you are you can be like, just download it. And there you go. Just start reading it. Excellent. And I'm going to also just put a push to our practitioners, our occupational and physical therapists, we're starting programs that offer rehab in the hospital after birth. Please get a copy of this book. I certainly will. I'll be using it to train all of us um, on what's really um, going on in labor and delivery that we need to know about because we're walking into some of the most traumatic cases that we've probably seen um, in the hospital. We're not used to treating these uh, moms after birth. Get a copy of this book. It's a parent's guide to a safer childbirth. Gina Mundy, childbirth attorney. Thank you so much for, for joining me today. Thank you, Rebecca, for having me.